Cancel Court with Judge Tony Towns. In this episode, the trial of Ja Morant versus the NBA. You know how much money he could get if he shut the fuck up and grow up? <laughs> About 200 million. And now, let's go to the courtroom. In this corner, the defense. Straight out of the Crenshaw Country Club. Please welcome C.P. In this corner, the prosecution. Fresh from the set of the color purple 2, put your hands together for Black Ron. Come to order. Cancel Court is now in session with Judge Tony Towns. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. There has been a tremendous amount of controversy as to whether or not NBA player Ja Morant deserves to be suspended for 25 games and potentially losing $60 million in earnings for a social media post. Or is this simply a case of overreaction by the NBA and the public? So we are here today to determine who do you agree with, the NBA or Ja Morant? We have veteran lawyer, Mr. Chris Powell, AKA CP representing Ja Morant. Mr. CP, welcome back to uh, Cancel Court. Uh, the last time you were here, you were complimenting Mr. Black Ron on his threads. Can you tell Ron uh, how dope that metal briefcase flash off that suit? Hey, boy. Is that three piece? Did it with the oh, shoe, oh, though. Oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't have a different color leather swap over. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of him today? I think he look good, man. And he put that little rose up there. You know, he look like the first nigga you talk to when it's time to bury grandma. I'm sorry for the family. <laughs> You got the little flower right there. That shit look good. Nah, nah, don't lean up because I'm not even roasting. I'm not even roasting. Sit back, man. He ain't got the double mum strap today. He look good. Three-piece suit. Every time he turn around, I see more suits. <laughs> I was about to ask a nigga for a loan. Like, look, what can y'all do for me on a house in the South? I just, you know what? I ain't going to lie, Your Honor. I'm not, a, I'm not here to roast Ron. This, this, that's, that's my brother. I wish the hat had more hat to it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker curled up like a nigga who take your auntie out and she come home crying. This nigga been lying. It's the curled up hat. What happened? He ain't nobody who he said he was. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. CP. No doubt, man. And we have lawyer Mr. Ron Daly, AKA Black Ron, representing the NBA. Welcome back, Mr. Black Ron. Mr. CP kind of went in on your threads. Do you have anything to say? Your Honor, to I object, I object, because I, I, I ain't even mentioned. What's up with you? Are you just getting the line up and saying, fuck the haircut, or what are you doing? <laughs> Do you be in a rush? Like, it was a lot of traffic, bro. You could have took your time, but I couldn't get the bag. Do you have a response to what you just heard, sir? Well, I mean, Your Honor, I would respond, but uh, judging on my opponent's outfit, he is dressed exactly like why we are in this court. <laughs> you got a grown ass man dressed up like a little ass boy over there, Your Honor. His knees are out for no reason. He ain't got no goddamn skateboard. Where you going? It's a very nice Gucci shirt. You can tell them PPP funds went a long way. He got, <laughs> that's the real Gucci, too. And he got the little Omarion type of fade on the side. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Got the tennis shoes, got the Back to the Future off whites on. Very nice. That man is very, very, very 17 over there in that outfit. I like that. Thank you, Mr. Black like Ron. Well, like welcome that. back to the both of you. Uh, both sides have two minutes of opening statements. Then you'll present the facts. You know, Your Honor, I also wanted to say something about your haircut. I didn't, but since he opened the floor, I might as well go ahead. Um, why they doing something to the back? See if they can go ahead and finish sponging it at the top. It looked like he, like he sponged it, but you it was dry. See the part dry. of the side where they kind of leaned him in? Yeah, you can like, see whoever did it was right-handed. Like they were rushing, like yeah. Whoever did it was right-handed, it was heavy right here. You, you could tell, you could tell. Like, on they, this they little launching pad was right here. Like they must have sponged it while they was eating. Or like, on the phone or something like that. Can you yeah. see them lean like this and they, and they sponging it? Yup. Y'all um, raccoon ass niggas done? Can we get started? Go ahead, double Thank you, we will proceed. Both sides will have two minutes of opening statements. Then you present factual evidence to the jury. We will end with two minutes of closing arguments. Once all evidence is presented, the jury of peers without bias will decide the fate of John Morant or is it the NBA based on the facts and the presentation given by the defense and prosecution. I will also like to reiterate that it's not up to me to decide this case. It's not up to the beautiful bailiff, Miss Ariel J. It is a um, major, major honor to continue to have you in this courtroom. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. 
We will begin with Mr. John Morant's representation. Mr. CP, please proceed with your opening statements. Thank you, Your Honor. Ah, I wanted to go first anyway. This nigga too well dressed. He probably got some real good shit to say about job credit. <laughs> you know, what I want to talk about today, Judge, is not just about a young man flashing a gun in a state where it's legal to have a gun and everybody can have a gun except the nigga with the most shit to protect. But I want to talk about what it means for a young black man to express his real right in this country to bear arms. How that scares everybody and makes them feel uncomfortable because his connotation. Here is a man who's richer than most of the police on the police force. He's richer than pretty much the mayor and everybody in that town. Him having a gun because he's young and black and the music that he listens to, people lead it to believe that him having a gun is about gang violence and all that. But he's actually one of the top 10 percenters in this country who is expressing his right to always show that he is protecting himself, right? We got this thing in the black community where you can't make it out and still rock with the black community because now that becomes dangerous because you're showing off just for having stuff. But then on top of that, we got your job telling you that some shit that you're doing away from the job is hurting everybody. Well, let's talk about how many white NBA players and NFL players and NHL players hunt bears, have some of the most dangerous 50 caliber rifles that you could ever own. And they show it on their Instagram and they show what they're doing with it, because that's what they into. Country music is about hunting stuff. And they out there with the guns and they hunting stuff. And that's all good. They could be shooting gators and they go out and do all this wild shit in the off season. But a black man who was drafted by a black city, one of the murder capitals, still interacting with the black neighborhood, but also showing that he's protecting himself, is a threat to the establishment. And that's a problem. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when we do it. Fuck them. That's what I got to say. Thank you, Mr. CP. For sure, no doubt, no doubt. Mr. No doubt. Black Rom, please begin with your opening statement. Boom. What man. Demetrius Jamel Morant. We used to call him Ja. That was cool. But when a nigga don't do cool shit, he no longer deserves a cool name. So, for the duration of this court proceeding, I will be referring to him by the very uncool last name he has, Demetrius Jamel Morant. Not only did he deserve 25 game suspension, not only did he deserve a loss in revenue on behalf of the black community, Yana, old Demetrius deserves an aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> Is that exhibit A? You see, Yana, there's a couple of terms in the black community that can only be remedied by an ass woman. Let the jury reflect that this is a belt. Oh, it's a good belt, Yana. Of the finest leathers of Stacey Adams. <laughs> See, with this belt, one can wield a pooty tang like on that thing. You can go with the old school Robin Williams end of house party. Throw it over your shoulder. Come down for force. <laughs> How are you gonna beat that ass that needs to get beat? <laughs> See, in the black community, terms like slippery slope can only get fixed with an ass whooping. Term like at risk youth can only be fixed by an ass whooping. We've all seen that wayward young boy. Look like he got a problem with authority blowing prime opportunities, God gifted, wonderfully skilled, in dire need of an ass whooping. The only problem is, Demetrius Jamel Morant is not a young boy, even though he would like to be a NBA young boy, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Demetrius Jamel Morant is 23 years old, Your Honor. And that is a grown ass man by American standards. You see, Tamir Rice was only 12 when he lost his life because he was playing in the park with a fake gun 
police perceived it to be real and perceived him to be a grown ass man holding it and robbed that young boy of all his promise, of all his opportunity. And now we got a grown ass man that is holding opportunities literally in the palm of his hand. My opponent said he's in that top 10%. No, no, no. He's a one percenter, sir. See, that boy makes over a million dollars a year, and by any standard, that makes you in the one percent. He got 200 of them millions, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, one percent is in 10%. It's in there. If you were top 10 pick, you could have been one, but go ahead. <laughs> You see, in the black community, we unfortunately bear the brunt of being a grown man even when we don't want to be. See, life don't give you no days off of being an adult. And the minute you become grown, you are required to be a grown man. Not only that, you are required to be a role model for the young black boys that are looking at you. And this young man, been acting like a little boy. A little boy who need his ass whooped. Oh shit. Don't get your ass beat. Cancel Court will be right back. Hey, it's your girl Ebonique. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe now. When you like and engage with our content, it recommends this video to more people. This is how we grow and keep this high quality entertainment free. Also, make sure you check out our new show, Cancel Court Case Review. We're going live every episode for an in-depth analysis of each trial. We'll be answering fans' questions and talking about your favorite moments from each case. You can also become a Defiant member today. We appreciate all the love and support. Mr. CP, you can present your first piece of evidence. Sir, man, please, I can't wait to talk after that bullshit. Let me explain <laughs> something to you. A black man representing a white corporation dressed in an eight-piece suit and a hat coming in here telling you that we need to beat the shit out of another black man with a belt don't seem crazy to y'all? You ever seen Django? <laughs> Who is this nigga <laughs> on that night? <laughs> Who is this nigga that has the audacity to express one of his rights because we didn't give him all that good white money? He making so much money, he needs to be ashamed of himself. All that goddamn money he making and he fucking around with a gun. Just like Tamir Rice, who shouldn't have had no goddamn toy gun, even though he was fucking 12. Who the fuck supposed to have toy guns? 12 year old. The problem is that not that Tamir Rice had a fucking gun. The problem is that the perception of a black person with any kind of gun is a threat to the point where the fucking police who are trained to recognize threats don't know the fucking difference. And the NBA don't know the fucking difference because the nigga doing this and doing that plus a gun mean that he finna slide on fucking vine or some shit. It don't make no fucking sense. It's not fair. We can't be young. You said we got to grow up. What do, you, what, do you mean, what do you mean we got to grow up? That's the problem. That's why, that's why Tamir Rice was, a, was perceived to be a man with a fucking gun, because we got to grow up. We got to grow up. So we don't get a chance to be young and 20-something with money and having fun. These motherfuckers, white kids, is on acid and worse, having a good ass time. Parents is fucking the Hiltons or, or the Kardashians, and they don't give a fuck. They can be whatever the fuck they want to be for a time period of just fucking having fun. The nigga has the right to have a gun. There was no laws broke. Once there was no laws broke, who the fuck are you to tell me that without breaking the law, you need to control every single thing that I do? I didn't bring it to the facility. They were never pointed at anybody. I literally had a legal gun. Did anybody go to jail behind that gun? No. Let me tell you something, dog. They need a way to speak to the niggas who they scared of. So what they do is they put money in the pocket of a person who they expect to respect that money enough to allow them an in into our neighborhoods, into our culture. And they expect a nigga to take that money and be like, cool. But some niggas is like, dude, that's my money because I earned it because I'm fucking sweet at basketball. And I don't owe you shit other than being fucking sweet at basketball. 
Oh, but I forgot. <laughs> y'all niggas own my Saturdays, too. My Sundays and my Easter's belong to y'all in this white money. This money that, that the black community act like I'm so lucky to have. I'm not lucky to have it. Ask John Morant what his father had him doing when niggas was out here worrying about girls. John Morant was putting in the work. When, when people was worried about parties, John Moran was putting in the work. He is undersized for any position in the NBA, and he's dominating. That shows you how much effort and time went into him making it. And now that he's made it and everything is kind of done, he is a little bit immature in his approach. Usually when you excel at one thing, you kind of are underachieving in a lot of things, especially things that are social. Because if you're special, you've been putting the time into what it means to be special. Michael Jackson didn't know how to talk to people because he was fucking Michael Jackson. I love it when black people who ain't got nowhere near the amount of money that they talking about, talk about what niggas need to do. When niggas, it's like, bro, the point that you even talking about it right now, representing the NBA in your finest suit, show that you already didn't chose sides. We ain't gonna never be nothing but boys. $200 million and a nigga can't do what the fuck he wanna do? What's the point of having 200 million then? Hmm. Thank you, Mr. CP. Mr. Black Ron, please present your first piece of evidence. I said, right foot creep. Ooh, I'm walking with that heater. Creep, stoop down, creep low. Make sure they don't see you. Walk him down, creep up on him, hit him with the heater. Them sound like lyrics that a positive black man are living. Does that sound like black unity? Or does that sound more like violence predicated on the black community by other black people? You know one thing, Yana, when you watch a liquor ad on TV, they never discourage people from buying alcohol. But right before the commercial go off, they always say, drink responsibly. See, there's nothing wrong with consumption if you're legally of age to partake. You do, however, bear the brunt of using responsibly. If John Morant, I'm sorry, Demetrius Jamel had went live from the gun range, we wouldn't have a problem with that. That's how you use guns responsibly. If they had shown him defending himself or his cohorts. You probably wouldn't have a problem with that either. Rapper DaBaby killed somebody in a Walmart. We still spend corporate money with him because he was using his weapon responsibly. But to dangle the littlest fucking gun they make <laughs> in a strip club of all places where they don't even allow you to sell alcohol if the dancers are gonna be fully butt naked. Because that would be irresponsible of the venue. You gonna bring a gun in there? And you gonna show that little shit off? <laughs> like that was something to be showing people? My opponent said that Mr. Moran is a public figure but should be allowed some modicum of privacy as a adult American citizen. Well, who the hell forced him to go on Instagram Live? When he was riding in the car and the guy beside him went on live, who forced him to brandish the weapon and show it to the camera? Nobody. Even his friends saw he was tripping. He tried to hurry up and get the camera off that nigga. Oh, but it was too late. We already saw you being irresponsible. It's not that he's lucky to have $200 million. It's the fact that that's a five-year contract, which means he get $40 million a year, which means he makes about a thousand times more than the average American every year. And you have the nerve not to adhere to the contract you signed for your job? If he was a regular nigga out there with the gun, wouldn't be no problem. Did you see anything happen to them broke niggas that was in the car with him? <laughs> they didn't sign no contract. They didn't lose any endorsements. They didn't sign a morality clause. 
They don't have any image to uphold. As a matter of fact, ain't the I in the N ideal image, Your Honor? So if we've given you money to use your name, image, and likeness, then you must represent yourself in a way that shines brightly on our company and not do anything that puts a dim light on us or our community. Hmm. Lay that nigga down so he can get his ass whooped. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. Just want to give y'all a little bit of math. Only 7% of all high school players make it to play college ball. That's division one, two, and three. It takes luck to do that. Only 1.2% of all college players make it into the NBA. That's not luck. That's immense skill. So how dare you put all of that time all of that opportunity on the line and do something that only 1.2% of the guys that are talented as you get to do and throw it away because you want to do gangster shit with your friends. Grow up, nigga. Fuck the comedy. This shit's getting real. Cancel Court will be right back. Mr. CP, I have a question for you. Many people are annoyed with your client's fake gangster and hood persona. Why is it that when black men get rich, they want to emulate hood and gangster behavior when they reach a certain level of success? Uh, I don't really give a damn, Your Honor. Like, I feel like what he did is what he did. I'm his lawyer. I'm here to make sure that everything is fair for him. And what I don't see as fair is how my client is getting completely ridiculed in a way that <laughs> the NBA and these other professional sports examples for children play it. He brought up drink responsibly. <clears throat> That's funny. Do you know any white men that drink responsibly? On a public scale? Rich? The average wrestling fan is four years old. The, the, the youngest wrestling fan is four years old. Little boys start liking wrestling about four years old when they want to slam around with their dad and slam their brothers. Objection, Your Honor. Can I talk for a On the grounds that I don't even know where this nigga going. He Can talking go about there? wrestling Can oh, I go and there? drinking. Can I go there? Over, let him get to his point. He's going to get to his point. He has two minutes. Get to the his point. The most popular wrestler of the 2000s was a dude named Stone Cold, who four-year-olds used to watch walk down an aisle, crack two beers, and pour it in his fucking face before he wrestled. Little kids were slamming box juices together, or even worse, trying to get to a brew. Once again, the problem is that it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when we do it. I'm not saying my client wasn't wrong. What I'm saying is, what is wrong with a black man being wrong just like these white men could be wrong? Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, yeah, he fucked up, but you know, whatever. Maybe he needs rehab. Maybe he needs other things. And we exhausted every possibility like we would if it was Kyle Corver, or if it was uh, uh, Tyler Hero, or if it was uh, Luka Doncic. Have we exhausted every possibility about his psyche? No, Adam Silver had a sit down with him, which I'm sure was very condescending based on their representation alone. I'm sure it was very condescending and very like, look, you're lucky to be here, okay? You're lucky to be, he looked like a goddamn Kermit the Frog and Piggy's baby. That's what he looked like. He ain't never dumped shit. Telling somebody, you're lucky to be here. You're lucky. Your Honor, Adam Silver is 6'5". I'm sure that white man can dunk. <laughs> This nigga ain't never dunk shit. <laughs> He's right. He's right. I haven't dunked shit. But guess what, though? I'm still not riding the coattails of the young dudes who did dunk, making them feel like they owe the hood something. You owe the hood to make sure you be on your best behavior. What you doing to try to enjoy your money like these white boys do? What, you, what are you doing? What are you doing picking up a gun like this? Don't you dare even pick up a gun like that. I can see if he picked it up like this. He picked it up like this, dog. What was he finna do? What was he really finna do with this gun that he picked up like this? Did you say it was the littlest gun? You probably could sneak in the strip club. I'm not sure. 
it just gets to the point where the bottom line is, here we see somebody who is lucky enough to excel in this horribly racist white society and they get the money that we all want and everything they do wrong is like, how dare they because we don't have it. That's what it really boils down to. He don't have smoke with nobody. He has no ops. He's just probably trying to protect himself. It's like, man, it's so funny how we watch them make an example out of our black celebrities all the time in front of us and we all just turn our back. You ever heard of buck busting? That's where they used to take the strongest slave and lay him out in front of everybody and demasculate him in ways that I don't even want to say. Just to prove a point that y'all thought this nigga was the strongest, he's not. Y'all thought he was y'all protector, he's not. I'm gonna show you that y'all have no hope. You get the 200 million, you think you made it? No, we own you. It's like, dog, if the police ain't say nothing, <laughs> bruh, I wish I would come to work. And, 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 and I got pulled over for speeding, but the police ain't give me no ticket. And then my boss like, here's a ticket, because uh, I'll be like, man, you don't get the fuck out of my face. I'm sorry that <laughs> y'all don't have $200 million. I'm sorry that this brother is, in your mind, squandering his opportunities and it's hurting your feelings. <laughs> but it's like, bro, I'm sorry. In my opinion, what he did was no more nefarious than anything that, <laughs> I ain't gonna say no names because I don't want to get no smoke with the NFL, NBA, but we've seen some white athletes do some pretty questionable things and they'd be swept under the rug a lot. A lot of different stuff is going on. But it's like, it seems like they're trying to make an example out of my client, and we just not having that. Don't move. Cancel Court will be right back. Okay. So, oh. Slow down. Oh, slow. Oh. What it tastes oh. like. What it tastes like, though. Eat. You <laughs> take, <laughs> take off this no me <laughs> too. And just stand still so we can just. All right, uh, you eat the chip, and then you stand still. <laughs> you are <laughs> I have a question. Mr. Black Ron, do you think it's a bit excessive for John Morant to be suspended for 25 games while NBA player Miles Bridges, who got 30 games for beating up the mother of his children in front of his kids and Josh simply fat flashed a fake gun, how are those both in the same conversation? One got 30 games for abusing a woman in front of her kids. The other one got 25 games for flashing a fake gun. Well, while I can't speak to the situation involving Mr. Gary and his Mr. Miles Bridges, yes. Yeah, to my You're on our object. He could damn sure speak to it a little bit. He could say, you speaking to it right now. I will say this. What I have noticed, particularly amongst the generation of young black men, is a bunch of buck passing. So you brought up buck breaking. But what about buck passing? I don't know what that is. Oh, I, I, I'm glad you asked. I'll let you know. See, buck passing is when it's everybody's fault but yours. You're gonna pass the buck. Oh, oh, it's not my fault that I did some fuck shit. It's because my daddy wasn't in my life. Even though I'm a grown man now, should be responsible for my own decisions, I'm gonna pass the buck. Kinda like you ever see somebody get rolled up or fired for being late and they say, but, but Jim be late too? You're gonna pass the buck. Try to absolve yourself of your responsibility. I got a question of why my opponent wants it both ways. You want to say, well, you want to spend money like the white folks do, but also want to be absolved of your actions the way white folks do it. Unfortunately, we don't live life in white skin. That very same city where Jai is doing his antics, young man by the name of Tyree Nichols lost his life to the police. Nick, give his family $200 million, it still wouldn't bring him back, Your Honor. In that very same city, more black men kill each other by gun violence than by any other means. We live in a generation where we are losing young black men by the fucking bucket fools to drill music. Before these boys can get a passport, they got a gun from a country they don't even know how to pronounce and are using it on each other. 
Most young men that I know that come up gangsters, Your Honor, are forced into those situations. Mama wasn't shit, daddy wasn't shit, grew into it environmentally. We are talking about a grown ass black man that came up in a two parent household. My opponent already testified to how his daddy was so in his life, he Joe Jackson him to greatness. And now that same daddy and mama are sitting courtside at the game, cheering on this bullshit that they boy doing. Rather than whoop his son, he'd rather whoop Shannon Sharp. I said something about slippery slopes earlier. Because my opponent said he probably just protecting himself. He got ops. You call teenagers ops, Your Honor? Because on Twitter, he told a little boy back in May 2022 that it's free to see how hollows feel. Mm. Month later, he threatened the head of security at the mall in a footlocker because his mama called him up there. Family don't give a damn that he's the meal ticket. Come up here and argue with this footlocker nigga and throw it all away. And he pull up with a weapon. July, a whole month later after that, he get into it with another little boy playing basketball at the house, punch the little boy in the head, then go in the house, get a gun, come back out, put the gun in his waistband. And then we see him in a strip club dangling the gun. And then the head of the NBA so condescendingly has a sit down with him where he says, I'm going to get into therapy. They tried to slap him on the wrist because he's the face of an organization. Poway pulled a juice. Immediately, Nike pulled their tennis shoe soon thereafter, and the NBA just say, promise us you're going to do better. Your Honor, Nike did release the shoe it just sold out. That is correct. And you know why they released it? Because they had already made it, Your Honor. And Your you Honor, can't call China and tell them, stop on the shoe production. Your Honor, it's funny you said that because as a sneakerhead, I'm sure you know that those shoes are probably slated for the Kyrie's. A lot of the design went into oh, Kyrie. Oh, I'm so, I'm so, when they I, I, Kyrie, I'm, 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 I'm so, I'm so happy that he brought up one young Kyrie Irving. They could have gave it to Victor Wimby Wanyana easy. The same Kyrie Irving that got dropped by Nike because he posted a documentary on his Twitter. He didn't say anything detrimental about anybody. He didn't do anything dangerous. He didn't promote anything dangerous. And Nike pulled his shoe from him. And you mean to tell me that Ja, Demetrius, Jamel, didn't do anything to deserve the treatment that he's got? After the NBA said, promise us you'll do better. We'll give you six games. How about that? Just sit down, six games. Promise us you'll get some anger management or some sort of therapy. Promise us you'll do better. We believe in you, Demetrius. We don't even have a problem with what Kyrie did. Why won't you hush? <laughs> I never said we had a problem with what Kyrie did. You said that like did. an old ass grandma, and then I shut the fuck up quick. Why don't you hush? <laughs> I never said we had a problem with what Kyrie did as a black community. That's my point. Kyrie did nothing wrong it just sounded and like, still got punished. My bad, this brother. This young man has done everything wrong. My bad, brother. For the last two years, he's been consistently fucking up. And we keep on, that's all right, baby. That's all right, baby. Thinking he gonna get it together one day. The reason why it's not okay for our young black men to live life like there is no consequences is because the consequences are very dire for us. It's literally life or death in these streets. And you gonna play with your life? And you got the money not to? The niggas you trying so hard to be like would gladly trade places with you. I call any nigga I know from the hood and say, I'll give you and your family $200 million not to do nothing else gangster in your life, and you'll see a church where the trap once stood the very next week. Because every nigga I know that's trapping and gangstering is doing it for the opportunity to never have to do it again. And you think they know what it's going to be like to have $200 million, the thing that they wish for that they never had. And you think Ja know what it's like to take a life? So why he keep on talking about it on the internet? Why he keep on bragging about it like that's number one, some shit he built like, and number two, some shit he'll swallow if he actually do it. Why is he playing like he grew up in these streets? Why is he playing like he have to live his life in a total gun society? 
LeBron James been the richest young black man for the last 20 years in the NBA. When have we ever seen LeBron ever have any problems? When have we ever seen LeBron tote heat? When have we ever seen LeBron carry himself like a gangster? When have we ever seen LeBron do any of the bullshit that Demetrius is doing? And he got every opportunity that that young man has and more. He's a billionaire to his millions. That's who he should grow up and try to be like. The conclusion of the trial of Ja Morant when Cancel Court returns. Share. Share it with your granny on Facebook. Share it with the woke mob on Twitter. Share it with your Instagram crush. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all your support. We will begin with closing arguments. Mr. CP, you can begin with your closing statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, man, the prosecution is, they draw a very, very, very compelling argument that paint a picture of a nigga that's lucky to be a supreme nigga. I ask all the time, how many games did John Morant miss because he was involved in anything nefarious? Right, how many, how many, how many times was he arrested? I hate when people get out of our culture and act like our culture ain't our culture. That's, we talk shit. We talk shit. If I was being indicted for all the shit that I talked while hooping, right? These little 17 year old niggas be big as hell sometimes. And they, they you know what I'm saying? You know, a nigga get to crunch your knee in the wrong way. It's like, motherfucker, I'll kill everybody out here. But you know it. That's, that's what you just said. It don't mean that. What's so funny is how on front street we leave our people when we be knowing better. We be knowing better, dog. Nobody gonna come to the defense and be like, bro, that's just some nigga shit. When do we have a union that steps in and be like, ah, your honor, your honor, this is some nigga shit. We got this. This is, has nothing to do with nothing. He just knows some nigga shit right now. We, we don't have nobody to do that for us. The NBA PA? They, they not, they, you know, they, they actually got his, his, his sentence put down from the whole season to 25 because they understand that low key, come on y'all, it was just some nigga shit. LeBron raps lyrics all the time. As a matter of fact, for a young rapper to have LeBron rapping your lyrics in the back of his Maybach on the way to his practices, like that's one of the hottest things that a young rapper could do. I can name four or five rappers, Dirk, I can name uh, Future, uh, T Grizzly, rappers that ha have gotten huge success off of LeBron just banging their music while he working out, being intense, banging their music in the car, boom, 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 hit the rollie, throw with the rollie, yo. It's like, it's the culture. They say black lives matter, but they be having their favorite black lives. The rest of these niggas better do what the fuck we tell them to do. Let me ask you a question. How many school shootings are from young little white boys and nobody ever questions the music that they listening to? Nobody ever be like, he was listening to that. I become so numb. It's like, oh, maybe he was numb. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe Noah was numb. And we never saw the signs. Lincoln Park was trying to tell us. We never saw the signs. <laughs> it's like, dog, I don't even know if you hear yourself. It's like, fam, I get it. He lucky to be as rich as he is with the skills that he got, with the daddy he had, with the family that he had, with the values that they were probably put into generations ago. He lucky. He can't fuck it up by being just regular be doing shit that regular niggas do. Like, dog, social media is out, bro. But if I, had, if I had to go to jail for every nigga I told I was gonna kill when I was 15, because I was scared, I think I'm killing all y'all when I get back. <laughs> I wasn't gonna kill shit. But it's like, that's, that's, that's what it is growing up in some of these areas, man. It's, it's an aggressive language. It's something that we understand, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's certain shit that is culturally, you know, some jive shit. Like, dog, Black Ryan, you know me. Can I come over your house without us pulling the guns out? Can you come over my house without us pulling our legal guns out? Objection, Your Honor. 
On what grounds? On the grounds you trying to pull me into some nigga shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sustain, Mr. CP. Can I, can, you know I'm not lying, bro. Relevance, Your Honor. <laughs> Man, please. That's not, is that not a, okay? What we right. do at the privacy of my home, pause, is our <laughs> business. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. CP, for your closing arguments. Sure. Mr. Black Ron, you have two minutes with closing statements. Thank you, Your Honor. And, 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 and as lighthearted as we make this for the purposes of today's proceedings, we're talking about something actually very dangerous. And what we're talking about is young fathers not acting like black daddies anymore. And I'm not talking about Demetrius Morant Sr. I'm talking about Demetrius Jamel Ja Morant. See, in all of this, he's a kid, let that young nigga have fun talk we've been doing, we forgot he's a father himself. He has his own children looking up to him. And just what the fuck is daddy's explanation going to be if he squanders the bag? See, it's not about him being lucky to have what he has. But let's not kid ourselves, America. He lucky to have what he has. He's so lucky that the other players that are as good as him don't make what he makes. And if he was to lose it because he blew his knee and we know the boy injury prone, he could already lose the bag. There are so many mitigating factors that could cause him to lose the bag that have nothing to do with his off the court activities. Just some freak accident shit during the game could cause him to lose the bag. And he knows this. All professional athletes know this. Every game we walk in a tightrope. Why you think LeBron James spends a hundred million dollars a year staying healthy? It's one million, not a hundred million. million. Well, He'll be broke it don't head. matter. He spends a lot of money. He didn't spend a hundred million so far. <laughs> no, he hasn't. What yes, the fuck he have. <laughs> Why don't you hush? <laughs> you don't know what he spent. <laughs> it's that nigga shit trying to count his pocket. <laughs> I'm serious though, young. Right. I'm, I'm dead serious. And I mean that when I say those words. I'm dead serious. There are so many black men that lost their lives doing what they were supposed to do. Philando Castile lost his life doing what he was supposed to do. Botham John lost his life doing what he was supposed to do. And now we got a nigga with the whole world in his hands doing what he got no business doing. And he's supposed to skate scot-free. Instead of having a, that was some nigga shit coalition, why won't we start a nigga you know better coalition? Same thing. No, it's not. Because on your side, you give niggas an excuse no, when we, they should know on better. On my side, we handle it See, in on house. my side, see, what, that, why you think they brought me here today, Yana? I'm the black delegate for the NBA. Nigga. They could have brought a white man in here. I saw you. Out of touch with the community. That was, he like, and how many times he gonna <laughs> talk during my closing argument? <laughs> I saw him tap dancing on the freeway. I was well, like, that? That's Your Honor, I, I order a mistrial. Order. You, you, have, you have 30 seconds, sir. He trying to get the case thrown out, Your Honor. Mr. CP? Because he knows that his client is guilty, number one, of fucking with his own money. And everybody knows that a fool and his money are soon parted. And how many times does this boy have to behave like a fool before he parts himself away from his money. And if he should, God forbid, knock on wood, I don't want nothing bad to befall him. But if it does, whose fault would it be? Nobody's but his own. So you telling me after he fuck it up? And you know his baby mama gonna leave him if he fuck it up. So now your daughter out here on public assistance, listening to your daddy used to be the shit, but he fucked it up. Breeding another statistic. And because of his antics, and because he fucked up his own money, now he's a black man that ain't worth respecting. You know how much money he can get if he went overseas? You know how much money he could get if he shut the fuck up and grow up? <laughs> About 200 million. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Black Ron.
At this time, it's up to the jury to make the decision. All those in favor of Ja Morant, raise your hand and say aye. All those in favor of the suspension, and you agree with the NBA, raise your right hand and say aye. Wow. This is a historical moment. This is a unanimous, unanimous decision. It is by order of this court that the NBA has won. John Morant should be suspended. That is so ordered. You know what you gotta go do. I ain't, I ain't, come on, man. You know what you gotta go do. I'm not hitting no black man. You know uh, what you gotta go do. On, go man. do it in secret so the white folks won't do tell it. Tell you what, tell you what, I'm gonna buck pass it to you. case. <laughs> <laughs> when I took this case, I knew it wasn't gonna be popular. You know what I'm saying? I knew that this side of it wasn't gonna be a popular opinion. And shut your ass up in now before I come give you something to cry about. But I'm just, I'm never gonna side against a black man for the sake of the institution. Yeah, man, I ain't want to do it, all right? It had to be done, huh? Okay, they sent one of us in from the community to do something good for black folks, and it just had to be me. I do think that my client is a victim of the clout chasing that's gotten crazy in our communities. Sometimes, black people, we got to hold each other responsible so that the worst outcome don't happen. Even so, it was some dumb shit that he was involved in and that shit that he was doing, but you just see how everybody else look out for their own. You know what I'm saying? Canceling them is not the first thing that they want to do. Now when he wake up, hopefully he do better. And if he don't, then I'll be back. Now we lost this one, but we'll be back. Let me go lay down. Shit, boy, make me pull a muscle in my damn back.